is Dino Dan from Cypress, California, and you're watching the Barbecue Central Show. Happy to have you aboard here for the really big barbecue show. Boing. We cook because we have to, and we grill because we want to. Hit me. Fine, how you going? <laughs> You have a great show. I'm a big fan. Boing. So what? What? What seems to be the problem here? This man looks like he's dead, and he's in the in the crackle. Charbono. It's all about the Charbono, dude. Succulent fish. What? He ate two feet for wiener. Oh, listen, Lavernius, shut your face. I'm shaking like a dog. Shit, peach seed. <laughs> we have top men working on it right now. Welcome to the second hour. It's the Barbecue Central Show, where we talk about Barbecue Central Show and barbecue and grilling related items of only the highest level of importance. If you've missed the first hour, where did you go? Or where were you? You missed a great first hour. You missed Malcolm Reed. You missed Mike Lang from Another Pint, Please. But don't get all bent out of shape. We're recording an audible version. It's called a podcast. And the first hour will be released here on Wednesday. The second hour, which is happening right now, will be released on Thursday. And I'll tell you about Friday here in just one second. Still to come on the show this evening, Sam, the cooking guy, in about 13 minutes from now. And closing out the show, Christy Vanover from Girls Can Grill. The Barbecue Central Show being brought to you from Palm City, USA, Cleveland. And we say good evening to those of you watching tonight through one of the video streaming platforms, Facebook.com slash BBQ Central Show or Twitch.tv slash BBQ Central Show. You can also watch on YouTube.com slash at BBQ Central Show if you'd rather take it in there. And, of course, we are asking you a poll question of the week. Would you make a 50-50 mix of wood pellets and wood chips to increase smoke flavor in your pellet cooker? And currently 65% of you now are saying, no, I would not do that. And I'm going to agree with those no or naysayers. Not somebody that's going to take a chance on that. As I had mentioned in the first hour, I believe there is a 99% chance that the combo of pellets and wood chips would make it halfway through the auger tube and then jam up and break it. And then I'm screwed. So, I'm not going to do it. But if you are daring, or you're just about ready to get rid of one of those pellet cookers, you should give it a try. Malcolm said he's going to bust one of his old timers out. Give it a try. So why not see what works? But again, this isn't something I'm demanding you do. This isn't something I am recommending you do. Uh, the manufacturer's recommendation is you don't do that because it's built for pellets only, so adding another fuel into the mix, who knows what can happen. But again, if you are a fan of YouTube and you go to Adrenaline Barbecue, one of those uh, first few new videos is the guy Greg, great name by the way, is telling you all about his experiment of running a 50-50 mix of wood chips and wood pellets in his Lone Star cooker. So however you want to do that or however you want to take a look at it. But it's not what I, again, it's not what I'm recommending. Uh, Smoking Joe is following up from this do-rag comment and he said, uh, the interview you did with Daniel Vaughn 11 years ago, you were wearing a do-rag. I was? Look at me being fashionable. Well, look at this. Smoking Joe has been hard at work because he sent a screen grab. Look at this guy. 11 years ago, I was 37 years old. I mean, can we just appreciate this picture for, like, how bad it is? Holy moly. Uh, Tasty Licks BBQ was a former longtime sponsor of the show. As soon as Fred went out of that side of the business, because he was also a music supply company, but he was also real big into barbecue. Fred Bernardo, by the way. Fred, shout out. Philly guy. 
So that do rag is terrible. Number one, uh, you can see that the microphone, uh, much like the microphone here. However, that was version number one of that microphone. I have version number two of the microphone because I sold that one. I got a different one. I went through two different ones actually, and then I went back to this Electra voice. So the do rag's bad. That was the original microphone, and then that backdrop is utterly horrible. <laughs> That's a vinyl banner in back of me. You can see bottom left that there's like kids socks on the carpet. There's glare coming off of the lighting that I had. But, you know, this was early years of the show. Joe, thank you for stalking me on the Internet as <laughs> usual. <laughs> there was a time when I was wearing do rags because barbecue teams so there were two things going on many, many years ago, a decade or more. Teams were sending me do-rags to wear on the show because there was an in-person guy, Billy Do-Rag Carroll, made an in-person visit when I lived in Euclid and gave me a bunch of do-rags and I started wearing them on the show. Bad look. And then other teams were like, oh, he's wearing a do-rag, so we'll send him a do-rag. So I was wearing successive do-rags. And then also teams were wearing, uh, sending me shirts, and I would take a picture right before the show started with the back of the shirt, and then would tag those respective competition teams. That's how I got my. That's how I've had my wardrobe for like the last fifteen years is outfitted by barbecue teams, which I love. Well, looky here. I think this is the second week in a row. Maddie and Steve are watching the show. Hey oh. <laughs> Hope you're enjoying the show, kids. And Steve, hope you turned into the first hour and saw me speaking to my very most special best friend, Malcolm Reed. You had no idea you were uh, fine footing it around with such a live fire celebrity as me. <laughs> <laughs> coming up on the best moments of the Barbecue Central show in 10 minutes or less. This coming Friday, episode 285, taking you back to June 7th, 2011, when I had Amy Mills on the show for the very first time. And as luck would not have it, 2011 is also the last time I've had Amy Mills on the show. If you aren't familiar with Amy and her barbecue journey, this is a great best moments show for you to take in. Now, maybe you have seen her on some of the TV shows over the last handful of years, wondered how she earned the right to get there. Well, this will be a best moment show you will want to check out. And in my defense, as I lament the fact that I have had Amy only on the show one time 12 years ago, 12 years ago, I've been doing this show a long ass time now, 2008 of February 2008 is when we started the live show. So that was three years after I started the live show, which has been 12 years since I've had Amy on. Wow. In my defense, I have reached out to Amy many times over the past few years. We just haven't been able to connect as she has a number of other business and financial interests that she is responsible for. But I'm confident that one day soon we will have her on the show again. So make sure you're subscribed to the show podcast feed. That way you're able to get the best moment show every Friday. You can also get any past Barbecue Central shows that you might have missed as well during the course of the week for whatever reason. And don't forget, if you want to hear a past guest or segment that might be lost in the archives, email John and let him know what you would like to hear. J-O-N at the BBQ Central Show dot com and let him know what you would like to hear. We have a comment coming in from the letter X. The numerals 8 and 6, and then the letters B, S, and D. Good evening. Oh, wait. What? Yeah, that's right. No, that's not it. What did you think? Uh, here we go. My, uh, my myth raised... My waif. <laughs> I mean, can we can we just use first and last names? I understand the folks on Twitch are a little more nerdy than the rest of. Them. Thoughts on Franklin Barbecue? Uh, my thoughts are with you. 
I can't help you on that. I've never been there. Get that big stuff out of here. I hear it's delightful. Not only do I hear it's delightful, but routinely, as in every day that it's open, people wait in line for four or five hours. What do I recommend alternatively than waiting in line? And no offense to Aaron, who I love. Drive out to El Paso and check out Smokin' Joe's Pit Barbecue Barbecue Food Trailer. How about that? I have no idea on the map where Austin and El Paso are in relation to each other. Texas is a very big state. Uh, to me, it could be like two hours or maybe it's like 12 hours. I don't know. But if it's within four hours, I would drive out to El Paso and check out Smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue. In fact, Daniel Vaughn from Texas Monthly was there earlier. Uh, was it over the weekend, Joe? I think. I th- I don't know nothing from nothing. We'll ask Daniel Vaughn in two weeks' time when he's on the show. We might be seeing a best of the new for Joe. My my opinion only. I haven't talked to any. But I think Joe's doing something very special in El Paso, much like Ernest Cervantes is doing in Seguin. When he started making his roll-up, I think our pal Smoking Joe is following a similar trajectory, and I'm very happy that we are documenting what could be a historical barbecue career in El Paso. So, Franklin Barbecue, if you want to wait, great. I don't wait. So if you're within a drive to El Paso that makes sense for you, try out that too. Okay, my myth, myth race way few. you. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. First names only or I'm never reading your comments again. How about that? Get that big stuff out of here. God, I had so much stuff to get to. I had a potted meat take to get to. I can't get to it because you're you're giving me too much content to react to. I even have an email from Yitzi in New Jersey for like the last three weeks, and I can't even get to that. But what I can get to is our pal Sam, the cooking guy, right after this. Stick around. You're, li- uh? You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Stern, Jim Rome, Dan Patrick, and Greg Rampey. The Mountain Rushmore of talk show entertainment. Now, let's get back to the Barbecue Central Show. Hey, this portion of the show being brought to you by Pit Barrel Cooker, the most unbelievable outdoor cooking device on the planet, currently available in three sizes and a host of accessories. Doesn't matter if you're a beginner or professional, it's a cooker you want to add to the arsenal, no matter. Visit pitbarrelcooker.com and tell them the Barbecue Central Show sent you. Smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue weighing in. We're 10 hours west of Austin. That seems far. So now it's on you. Person was asking about Franklin. Do you want to drive? Ten- I don't even know where you might even be in relation. You're probably not even in Austin or the surrounding area. But know this. Geographically, here's your lesson for the day. If you're in Austin, it's 10 hours west Till El Paso, if you want to go see Smoking Joe's Pit Barbie. Okay? That's all you need to know. My next guest is a YouTube cooking sensation, which he loves when I say that every month. Uh, there are 3.53 million subscribers as of June 1st. And you see him here on the first Tuesday of every month in the second hour leading off. Hi, pal. Not yours. Say I'm the cooking guy. Sam, well, YouTube. I could be there. Well, I could be there, pal. No, you're my pal. That's it. Doug, Doug, Shiding, Doug Shiding listens, and I, I consider myself his pal. Look, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you who you can be pals with, but you're not going to be pals you're, with Doug. That's it. In We're effect, done. you just did. You're telling people I'm not their pal, and I can't be their pal. My pal, that's not that's yours. That's what I'm saying. Well, I'm just saying Semantics. I could be their pal. Well, Malcolm, oh, I think I'd like forget. to be pals with Malcolm. You don't even like Malcolm. 
I do like Malcolm. You I said, the, you said like two months ago By you didn't the, like. What? That's such BS. By the way, all you dickheads, nobody <laughs> wanted to put Malcolm through to uh, to getting into the Hall of Fame. Me here in San Diego, I was rooting for the guy. <laughs> who, who are these uh, dickheads, dickheads that you're calling out? Do you even you know? And, you and your you and your boys, <laughs> your homies. What? What you are you talking? Embedded you and your embedded correspondence with your little yeah. picks. I think little somebody picks. did put. Uh, somebody did say they would like to see Malcolm Reed go through. By the way, well, one of those guys. I don't did. know. Who, I yeah. don't know who that and was. again, it doesn't All matter what is, we want. It matters how the voters vote. Of course, yes. I'm just saying. I can be friends with other people besides you. I don't know why we circled back to that. I was pretty happy wow. being able Greg, to say who listen, can be friends with Greg, you and who Greg, can't. Greg. Listen, Greg, you, you know, your listeners may remember I have a degree in French literature. So let's just <laughs> leave it at that. Shall we? <laughs> that wasn't wow. too inside, was it? Wow, wow, <laughs> wow. I can only imagine yeah. which first person in the instant chat is going to be able to pull that one but wow <laughs> free prize for you get you get one of sam's books you if you can pull that one off. you can always I'm give away gonna shit. give away a book and a and 10 knives look you two poll question of the week yeah. if we can possibly get back on track and i doubt of course it we can. We're would never you on make track, a 50 50 mix you have a pellet cooker would you make a 50 50 mix of wood pellets and wood chips to increase the smoke flavor of your pellet cooker no. Nope. I find there's enough smoke. Now, look, I'm not a good old boy, right? I don't have an offset. I didn't make some smoker out of a you know drum and duct tape and some wire and an anchor uh, from a ship in the 1800s. Hmm. I like the smoke that comes off it. So that that's the first part. My wife wouldn't want anything with any more smoke. Mm -hmm. She's runs smoke the leaner smoke side yep. but the other thing is i find it hard to believe that the pellets and the the chips would burn at the same time i feel like a chip would go faster not being compressed I, hey what do i know i grew up in a cult malcolm and i talked about it last hour we were mm -hmm. both in agreement with by the way the majority of the youtube voting public which is 68 percent, saying no they are not going to do that uh, a, yeah. widely going against and, and railing against what the manufacturer is suggesting, which is only wood pellets. And yeah. some manufacturers say only their wood pellets, but that's highly illegal, but we won't get into that. Yeah. And uh, we said, hey, like you mentioned, some of us are within the subculture. We like a heavier smoke profile or we've run a stick burner. Now, you can run a stick burner and still get a lighter smoke profile yeah. depending on the yeah, wood yeah. that you're going to use. But by and large... Yeah. It's long been known that the pellet cooker is providing a much lighter smoke profile than you're going to get on other styles of cookers, right? But, but and I, would, but say, yeah. and I think that's what the general public wants. I'm getting off yeah. of my throne. I'm going out to the masses yeah, yeah. now and be and assimilating with them just for a moment, yeah, trying yeah. to act like them. They like to say a, a light smoke or I used wood, but they don't really want the heavy profile, and that's what the pellet cooker is giving you. Yeah. Um, you're aiming for the middle of the room, right? It's kind of yes. where I go with my food. I'm not uh, super fancy French. I'm not super organic and vegan. I go where most of the people go, an expression I learned years ago, there's more fat in the middle, and that's certainly true of <laughs> most people's bodies the earth and orange, that kind of thing. I want to go where more people are going to be accepting of what I'm doing. And I think the pellet smoke that comes off is just fine. If you want a heavier level of smoke, then use hickory or mesquite. I don't use those pellets because, um, because Kelly's not crazy about them. And I find I get enough with, you know, I generally uh, reach for pecan. That's kind of my, my go-to. Gonna... I'll tell you what I did do once. So go ahead. No, no, no I was going to. Uh, switch to something else. So finish your thought. Well, while we're on pellets, here's what I did. I, I had a collaboration with uh, my cousin that owns a uh, brewery here in San Diego called Alesmith. It's a fantastic beer. Well, they got a huge variety of them. 
And the beer we did was a Japanese rice lager. And the hops that he used for this collab beer were pellets. Hmm. And I'd never seen hops in the shape of pellets before. And so while we're at the brewery mixing this concoction and he's showing me and we're taking pictures, dumping the pellets in and stuff like that, I looked at the pellets and I said, they look just like, and the light bulb went off and I went, holy shit, I need a bag of those. <laughs> and I took the bag home and I went like 50, 50. I went, first I went like 25, 75, 25% uh, hop pellets in my, in my smoker. And it gave kind of a little bit of a hint. I gave more. The thing is, they burn faster mm. uh, than the than the proper wood pellets, which made me think that the wood chips are going to burn faster. Anyway, I just gave somebody a great idea out there. The next time you're at a competition, throw a couple handfuls of the hop pellets in. And if you win, I just want a little credit. I just want when you're getting your big ass trophy yeah. with a big big fat pig on top of it in gold or bronze. I want you to just shout out Sam, the cooking guy. Hey, Sam, thanks for the idea. I like to thank all my boys on the team here and men and women on my team here. And it's been great, but thank you, Sam. That's all I need. Sam, watching this evening is none other than the expert drink guesser of Sam and Max. Madison Rempe is watching tonight through Madison Facebook. Madison Rempe. You can believe it. Can you believe that? I got a high Sam out of that. Yeah. That's right. Uh, I'm going to tell you, why well, you are better than me when it comes to cooking, Sam, because oh, on your most recent video, the chicken caprese sandwich, yeah, oh, which looked great. Yeah. You did something well, I Thank never you. would have thought of doing ever. Mm. As you start what? this cooking process, before you put Go the ahead. sando in the pan, you put down some shredded mozzarella and some mozzarella, baby yeah. sliced tomatoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then... Would... then you put the sandwich down so the cheese and the tomatoes yeah. adhere to the outside of the sandwich. That was, was that not freaking beautiful? Or this what? is what separates you from mm. me and the rest of the malfeasance in the cooking world. Well, I'll tell you something. You know, you could put anything. So, for the people that can't get that vision in their head, imagine you're making a grilled cheese. You butter the outside and you put it down on your nonstick pan or your flat top, whatever. I put some cheese, scattered some cheese first before the sandwich went down, and then little slices of uh, thin slices of uh, cherry tomatoes and a few basil leaves. Yeah, basil. But it could be almost anything. It could be uh, uh, little thin slices of a Holland pepper. Uh, it, it could be, uh, I don't know, if I was going to say radish. Radish would be stupid, but l those little baby cupping pepperonis would be uneffing believable in that. Shit, why didn't I do that? I'm going to do that now. It would change the grilled cheese world forever. Mm. It was really good. It was a great sandwich. Messy AF, but so delicious. Yeah, but it's it's mm -hmm. just the... So to me, that's what separates somebody that's doing what you do and then the rest of us watchers. You're going to go into a grocery store. Like, I need a list. I can't walk down an aisle and think, oh... Uh, these are going to go well with this and blah, blah, blah. And I could probably yeah. add a little bit of whatnot. I need the list and then I can execute the recipe and then I can make my own adjustments after that whole process happens. But you can, you can just make it happen. I'll tell you this. I have an assistant that's there when we shoot. Uh, she does all the dishes. You know, I used to do everything myself. We'd finish the shoot. The boys would put away the cameras. They'd leave and then I'd be there for another hour and a half cleaning. I finally got smart. I have an assistant. So she's doing dishes inside while we're shooting outside. If I, I can say, hey, Jill, can you, I, I need the, the, whatever the pan or the, the, the lemon squeeze thing, whatever. She'll bring it out to me. She's great. She would shop for me, but I'm so, um, I don't want to say it's that I'm anal, but my ideas come in the aisle at the supermarket. Like, let's say I know I'm going to make a grilled cheese sandwich. I could say, go get this loaf of bread. But when I'm at the supermarket, I'll get the loaf of bread. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I've never used this. I want that. Mm. So I can't give up that, that one function, that one task, which honestly, I love, I, I love going to the grocery store, supermarket. Especially love supermarkets in other countries. They're fascinating to me. They really are.
but I, I like shopping. I could never use one of those services that you just send your order and they pick up yeah. all the crap and Into bring the cart. Never. Never. Yeah. Sam, it's not a competition. But also, Which means it's a competition but also when you say that. watching tonight is the oldest, Bobby Rempe, and her boyfriend, Quentin Posey. Jeez. D2 football Wait, sensation, does Quentin Posey. Does this, happen, does this happen very often? I don't know I, why. They, they've never taken night. an interest, other than being judges on Barbecue Central Show's American Idol. Yes, I they know have that. never taken interest in this show. Maybe ever. they're maybe maybe they're secretly playing the Sam the Cooking Guy on the Barbecue Central Show drinking game. Oh, and whenever I say a certain word, they got to <laughs> take a shot. I wonder what that word is. I don't I know. Really hammered. I know. Shit. Who do we yes. like better, huh. Sam? Do we like Bobby or Maddie better? Oh, come on. Your wife. <laughs> yes. Correct. What am I getting? That's Pick one right. of your kids? I don't For know. God's well, sake. Know what kind of mood you're God in here tonight? Man. Why not? Who do we not like better? To... Who do we like better? Yeah. Bobby's boyfriend, Quentin, Division Two, yes. uh, uh, Go defensive ahead. back, all-star in the Peace Act? Yes. Or do we yes. like uh, Army reservist Steve Susnick from Willoughby, Ohio, Kent State student as well? I gotta go with Steve. Yes, of course. He's an army. He's right. an army reservist. Come on, Quinn. Please. You're on thin ice, pal. Be you might be out of here. Here's the difference. <laughs> Quentin is all about himself on that field. Yes. Yeah, maybe his team, but Steve Hard. is heading into a world that he's out there for all of us. He's selfless. Thank you for your almost service, Steve. That's right. Well, I mean, he drills. Or, I mean, he, he does it. He can he be does, called does, up at any second. He does. He does weekend stuff now, right? Getting prepared for it. Yes, one How weekend a month, two weekends a year. Boys? It's got to be How twenty, right? I don't know. Sure, it's your daughter's uh, boyfriend. Yes, but I only try to know as much as I need to know. I have to remain distant because I either like them until I don't, and then I might have to kill both of them at some point. <laughs> don't no no. But don't, that's not don't, up to me. Don't. That's up to them. There's no killing. There's no killing. Well, well, that's of course. true. There's always the ball is in their court. Yes, there's always the ball opportunity is for definitely killing. in their court. Yes. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you a question All about right. something. I my Instagram oh, at times I'm so mad that uh <laughs> it, it's nothing but food. It yes. is nothing but food. As it should be. I feel like I think about something and it shows up. Yes. There's a lot of barbecue. There's a lot of smoking. There's a lot of grilling. There's a lot of meat and cutting and this and that and I, I'm sick and fucking tired of those fast things that are just audio clips, you know? The the guys that take and they they take a bite of something, they enhance the sound of the crunch about six thousand percent. And they go, so good. And then they it's 18 quick cuts making the thing, right? I I'm so fucking sick of those. Wow. But I came across a grill the other day uh -huh. that I believe is from my homeland. I think it's from my America. Homeland. I've never seen it. My 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 previous home. I was there this weekend actually. Um, Black Hearth Grills. And and by the way, I have no connection and there's no pimping. I just want to know if you know anything about them. And I ha I'm embarrassed to say this, but my attraction to it yes. is almost mostly um, materialistic. Be they're beautiful. <laughs> hmm. Black hearth they make grills? A hearth? Hearth, I think. Hearth. Uh -huh. They make one that looks like six feet wide. I think it's a combo gas smoker thing, but it is low profile and freaking beautiful. You know, I have a caliber uh, gas grill yeah. that has that low profile lid that, that folds all the way down. Theirs also looks low. I just want to know what you know about it because... Um, is it black earth you grills it? you're the most wait 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 is it black, black earth? earth maybe what did i say black hearth i think i said black hearth yeah. black earth black hearth is this probably it? that's the thing oh, that look wow, at, wait, that. look at that. Wow. if that doesn't get you horny i can't uh, imagine what will that's right <laughs> i'm ready to go sam here we <laughs> yeah that's... but doesn't the, the lid looks low profile right yeah wow look at i that. think it's so even bad. got uh two different stands yeah, Oof, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Look at that. And this is... Uh, but I think it's... See, I think... Black Earth. Yeah. Black Earth. Sorry, Black Hybrid Earth. Hybrid Grill. 
There you go. So the hybrids innovation patented technology combines the benefits of both traditional propane grilling and the wood smoker okay. under one hood. How about that? There you go. Temperature ranges wood. of 100 to 600, 650. Bah, 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 bah. But I yeah. just think it's pretty. I don't know if it works. And, and uh, but I just I like that. I like the metal on the lid. Yeah. I just think they've done a nice job. Anyway, I want to know if you knew. Had you holy, have you heard of holy. it? Holy. No, I've never right. heard of uh, Black Earth. Oh, look, look at the prices. Yeah, look now. Look at this. They're not. This is you know, the my, my father Black Earth community. Jesus. Look at the size of this thing. There's 47 uh, knobs know what on that the front. Looks like? No, there's not 47. You can count better than that. Uh, there's eight. <laughs> you know what it looks like? It looks like those grills that you rent from a yes. um, like a like yeah, a for a uh, church function. Like a rental company, yeah, for a church function. Look at, is that pellet? That's not pellet. That's that pellets pellet? there. That's the pellet hopper. But look at this right here on the bottom right. That's that? a fireboard. They what? Yeah, that's a fireboard. How do you not know about this with your your fireboard oh, boy? They don't tell me. What do I know? Oh, hmm. They should look at this. Why are people not talking about their shit more? I don't know that. I mean, I've uh, so to okay, answer your I'm, question, I'm not familiar. Uh, they are highly with. aesthetically pleasing. They're on the higher end of that's price, but honestly, you know. I'm embarrassed to say that that's what got me at first. Was that? Well, I'm. Well, it's also what got me about my wife. The, so, the price tag, or it was hot. The look. <laughs> <laughs> did I oh, mention oh, that? Right, uh, right, right. Did I mention uh, to yeah. your listeners that I have a degree in uh, French literature? But you might have mentioned that. Uh, Okay, already good, yeah. by the way nobody's yeah. guessed right here so nobody's for, guessed for as much as i people immediately paying, knew people are not paying close enough attention that's Obviously all i not. have to say uh what yeah. is your go to oh let me ask you this question because malcolm mentioned yeah. it on the way out and i didn't even think about it are you going to be available yeah. next month because next tuesday is july 4th wait what oh uh, i'm sorry uh, uh, yeah. in, like the, the the next you, month you mean next the next week. next time i'm here yeah 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 you're fine with that i hate to not I think I'm here. All sure. Right. Malcolm Reed said he was going to be blowing up fireworks. I'm sure he was. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, it's not dark, so I don't need to do that. And we'll probably be right here looking out that window mm -hmm. at the fireworks that happen over the San Diego Bay that's over there someplace. Perfect. All right. So we'll yeah. count you in yeah. for next month. And count me in. We'll talk about the following next month. Combustion ink experience with that thermometer. And uh -oh. how so that means you I better start using it. Go ahead. <laughs> and how you have found your experience with the Traeger Ironwood XL and the Traeger Flat Rock since you've had them. Mm -hmm. These are things that we're going to be talking about next month. Those are on the list. Those are on the list. I got you. Okay, I got it. Okay. Sam, before I let you go, I'm going to close it out the way yes. I close it out every segment. What am I making for dinner tomorrow night? You know what I'm making tonight? Uh, Kelly's out of town. Um, by herself she's still in the old she's still in the old country so i went to the store today i'm working on a recipe for something that will not interest any of your listeners great let's hear um it. no it's it's involves liver i'm sure there's plenty of listeners that love liver it involves chopped liver i mean what's the difference it's liver it's actually better. It's with mayo. There's eggs. There's onions. And Chopped stuff. liver is better than regular but liver. I go like, is it is um, it liver salad? Is that what you mean? <laughs> like chicken salad, Jesus. liver salad? What? I don't know. I'm Ew. trying to get a. I'm trying to get Ew, a. No. I'm trying to get a. Chopped visual. liver is a decidedly uh, Jewish holiday food, hmm. and to many people, um, I think two of my three sons included, it's disgusting. But you gotta love. You gotta like liver. You cook liver, chicken livers with onions. Yeah, and then and then you process them, um, and then you add you mix in some mayo and some uh, parsley and that kind of stuff. It's really good. Anyway, anyway, it's a long story, and I'm not going to get into it right now. But the point is, I went to the store to buy some parsley for this because I was out, and I walked past the the seafood counter, and there was some beautiful salmon there. And I looked at the guy, and he goes, hey, uh, can I get you anything? I go, is it possible just to have some belly of that beautiful whole salmon filet right there? He goes, 100%. How much <laughs> do you want? I go, give me like just two inches down the whole length. 
So just before we got on the air, I uh, got it off the skin. I chopped it up. It's a little container in my fridge. I have uh, some furikake. You know what furikake is? Of course. How dare you? <laughs> I have some furikake, some Japanese mayo that I'll mix with it. And I'm not sure what I'll put it on yet. Maybe some rice. Hmm. I'll probably make some white rice, put it on that. And uh, that's that's my dinner tonight and could be your dinner tonight or tomorrow night. Smoking Joe's Pit says your watch is pretty savage. You have the Nixon on tonight? I do have my my dark gray Nixon. Uh huh. Thanks, uh, thanks, Joe. I think Smoking yeah. Joe's Thank Pit you. Barbecue would be shocked. He's saying that that watch costs more than the high level Black Earth Grill, but I happen to know that it's uh, far from the case. It's not even close. It's not a, even close. It's, a, it's less than a tenth of the price. Yeah. Totally. And, but they're right. really cool watches. I have. It's a great watch. Or watch I'll tell you something. I've got a much more expensive watch than this. Yes. This is the one that gets the uh, comments. Mm, I that. think because of its size. Yeah, it's 51 millimeter. It's very big. It's a big ass watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With uh, my logo on the inside of it. Of course. The, uh, it's custom. The, uh, side. Yep. You can subscribe to Sam over on YouTube when you go to youtube.com slash at the cooking guy. And you can also go to shop stcg.com. What am I getting? Uh, what am I getting your boner? Uh, I just got it. I just got one uh, in my hand. It sounds so bad the other day and it will be coming to you. You'll have it uh, within a week. I'm going to have your boner in a week. It's beautiful. My six inch boner. Okay, sounds great. And I'm just going to isolate this, and tomorrow or next week we'll have it in the sound drop bank. Great. Uh, So uh, shop Uh, stcg.com for all the accoutrements. Go there for everything fun. And thecookingguy.com for everything else recipe-wise. Sam, always appreciate the time. We'll see you in July. Thanks, buddy. Make something different, everybody. Don't make the same shit all the time. That's right. Don't make the same stuff all the time. All right, Christy Vanover is ready to go. We'll get to her in just one second. We'll see what she thinks about the YouTube poll question of the week. Hey, Big Papa Smokers is the one-stop online shop for all things barbecue, a curated selection of only the best outdoor cooking and grilling supplies, getting you on the path to better barbecue results in no time. Everything's been Pitmaster approved by Sterling Big Papa Ball. Known for the championship rubs and seasonings, popular flavors like Sweet Money Cattle Prod Cash Cow, Double Secret Steak Rub, Hot Sweet Money, I think that's a thing too, and Little Louis Season Salt, which I love. 13 perfectly balanced flavors, transforming ordinary meals into extraordinary meals. Also owner of Granny's Barbecue Sauce. So if you're looking for a new go-to sauce that will please everybody, why not give Granny's Traditional Sauce a shot? Also a seller of the very best pellet charcoal and wood cookers available. If you're looking for a versatile smoker that's easy to use, check out that Mac Two Star General Pellet Cooker. Big Papa Smokers, the exclusive Mac dealer, even offering special packages. If you're not a fan of pellet smokers, take a look at that Old Hickory Ace BP, the only charcoal smoker the Big Papa trusts on his competition trailer. If you're not sure what grill you need, call him and ask questions. 877-828-0727. That's 877-828-0727. 0727 or shop their website, bigpapasmokers.com. That's B I G P O P P A smokers.com. We are back with Girls Can Grill's Christy Vanover right after this. Stick around, be right back. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Let's get back to a guy who has more experience giving you his opinion than he actually has cooking. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rampey. And of course, we're thanking Sam the Cooking Guy for joining us last segment, thecookingguy.com, and links to all of his various other internet properties that you can link to off of that. Helping me close it out tonight, a competitive barbecue cook, a KCBS certified judge, very popular on social media, and is always looking to promote the fun of cooking over some type of live fire. Earlier in the year, Kamado Joe introduced their Connected Joe cooker into the market, and I have seen interesting talk shooting around the internet and thought it would be interesting here to have somebody who actually has one and can talk knowledgeably about it. 
She's the pitmaster of girls, Ken Grill. We welcome back Christy Van over to the show. Hey, Christy. Hi. Before before we talk about Connected Joe, whoever that is, let's talk about the YouTube poll question of the week. And I'm asking everybody this. Would you make a 50-50 mix of pellet and wood chips to increase the smoke output of your pellet cooker? No. Mm. And the reason <laughs> the reason for that is because they're they're really engineered to run off of pellets. Um, you can increase the smoke by putting it in a smoke tube, like an amazing tube or something like that. Um, that's a good way if you want more of that natural wood flavor. But no, I think you'll clog it. Um, I've dropped a drill bit in a pellet grill before and clogged it and caught it on fire and done all sorts of things. So <laughs> yeah, no, they're they're designed for pellets. So I'd, I'd keep it with pellets. All right. So 64% of the YouTube voting public are agreeing with us saying, no, we would not do that. As you said, pellet manufacturers are not recommending that. However, there is a video that's circulating now from a Greg at Ballistic Barbecue who owns a Lone Star pellet cooker and evidently Lone Star makes wood chips and he decided to go 50-50. That's his experience. So if you're interested in watching the video, you can go ahead and do that. If you're also interested in throwing caution to the wind and you want to document (laughs) it and let me know all of your trials and tribulations and experience going through it, would love to hear the feedback. And if you're interesting, have you on as a guest and we can talk about it, but that's a different story for a different day. As I had mentioned in the yeah. open, Christy. I want to see him grind up some charcoal yes. briquettes or lump. And yeah, I mean, why, why not? not, right? I mean, they have charcoal <laughs> pellets now. I mean, they had those 10 years yeah. ago and then they went away, but now they've made a resurgence as well. So uh, we'll see yeah. what happens. You have a Kamado Joe, a connected Joe, as it were, and I've been talking to Wes Wright about it from cookoutnews.com. I've had a... Uh, weird conversation with the owner at Primo, uh, Nick Bauer, who said, well, Connected Joe is certainly a thing. However, the people that gave um, uh, Kamado Joe that technology like showed up to our door the next day and said, hey, do you want the same thing that uh, Kamado Joe was going to use? So there doesn't seem to be any exclusivity to that, um, not necessarily here or there. Uh, talk to me about the basic operations of Connected Joe. So what's unique about Connected Joe compared to a regular Kamado Joe or Big Green Egg or Primo, et cetera, is the digital technology. So if you think about a pellet grill, which really kind of changed the barbecue game as far as bringing in people who were not comfortable managing heat, managing fires, pellet grills kind of turn grills into ovens. You push some buttons, you hit 350 degrees or whatever temperature you want to cook at, and everything happens for you. Well, that really it existed a little bit with the master belt with the charcoal like they they worked that out um there was definitely some hot spots in that one so there were some things to manage through that but with the connected joe does basically the same kind of concept as that but it you can use charcoal you can use lump charcoal you can use briquette charcoal you put it in to the kamado joe you push the button and it automatically lights it for you which is one feature but then it basically has an onboard control fan so whether it's a fireboard or flame boss or whatever brand you usually use or a billows it's basically got all of that worked into the components. So you set the dial just like you would for an oven or like you would for a pellet grill. And then it's the idea is that it manages the heat for you. It blows in the oxygen, feeds the fire, et cetera. So you basically don't have to do anything to manage your heat mm-hmm. and you just cook it according to the recipe. So my next question was going to be what charcoal do you use now for as long as I've been in the game hearing about ceramic style cookers, it's long been preached only use lump you know it doesn't ash as much mm-hmm. not going to clog up sometimes maybe the ash isn't coming down the the specific grate that needs to get down to the bottom where you would end up cleaning it out but you're saying it doesn't matter you can use a briquette charcoal which as anybody knows is a a large uh asher large I don't even know what the hell i'm trying mm-hmm. creates much more ash <laughs> than lump charcoal yes. would but that doesn't seem to be a problem yeah, no, I've actually cooked with both. I've cooked with lump, I've cooked with briquette, and then I've also done a combo because personally, I actually mm-hmm. like a combo. Mm-hmm. I like the higher heat you get from lump. I like the flavor you get from briquette. It's just a little bit more unique flavor, I think. Um, just that traditional backyard flavor. I've thrown wood chunks in there as well. Um, from a clean out standpoint, yes, it does produce more ash because that's what briquettes do. Um, but that was one of the things with the Kamado that I wanted to test as well. Um, cleaning out 
grills is a big deal. Um, and especially with, with women grillers, they don't like to get dirty. That's the feedback I hear all the time. That's kind of the reason, one of the reasons they don't do charcoal as much. Pellets a little bit easier, but in the end, pellets really not, unless you have like mm. a GMG where you can vacuum out the ash, where they've got that little kind of compartment where you can throw your shop vac right through there. You know, if you have a Traeger or something like that, you've got to pull out the grill grates. You've got to pull out the deflector plate. You know, it's all greasy. It's a mess. And then you have like this much ash that you're going to like get out of there. It's not a lot, but you have to do it every now and then. Well, the Kamado Joe, you take off the grates. I mean, it's similar to a big green egg or, or Primo, but you basically take off your grates and then you kind of rake it all down. And it has kind of like a kick ash basket kind of concept mm -hmm. kind of built in there. And then it goes down in the bottom. But what I do like about the Kamado Joe compared to at least the big green egg that I have is it's got that drawer that you just pull the drawer out, put it over to your ash can or whatever your trash can, if it's all the way cool and you just dump it out. And I was concerned it wasn't going to collect all the ash because I, when I use briquettes and there was more ash, I was concerned it might overflow and then kind of make a mess, but it, the capacity on it was fine. Hmm. I didn't have any issues with that. You had mentioned a kick ash basket style mm -hmm. uh, innard. Can you retrofit? Can you put a kick ash basket in there? Or does it say if you're going to use this effectively, just keep all the OEM parts where they're at? Yeah, I don't know. I th yes, if you used it on manual, there'd be no problem using the kick ash basket in there. But because of the automatic fire starter system, I think the kick ash basket may interfere. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I, ha I haven't retrofitted and tried that out. But the way the automatic fire system works is if you visualize like an electric burner on an old fashioned stovetop, where you know you turn it on and then it turns bright red that's basically inside of the cavity of the connected joe so when you push the button and it's optional you don't have to use this but you push that button and that burner that electric burner basically gets really really hot and it lights your coals automatically so you don't have to use fire starters you don't have to use you know a lighter or anything like that you just push that button and it lights it for you so i don't know if a kick ash basket would interfere with that um, heat you know or not i'm not sure how many times have you used it Probably five to seven, I think. Yeah. How do you come across? Um, so right now I'm doing expert grill reviews for barbecue guys. So they're sending me a variety of grills to just test out and create videos for, um, give my honest feedback for. And that's one of the main things that I said to them. I said, you know, I don't want you send me, sending me a grill and then me having to say that I love it because if I don't love it, I, I want to tell people I don't love it. I know they're trying to sell grills, but you know, I've got my reputation too. And they 100% said, yes, that we want your honest feedback. We want your honest opinion. Um, and with the Connected Joe, there's been a little hiccups. There, there have been a few, and I've been in touch with their engineers um, and their marketing team and other folks, because I have kind of a beta model also. So we're working through some of those things and I'm giving feedback on them and um, things are improving as we go. And they weren't big things, but um, enough that definitely they've got to make some tweaks. I'm interested when you're telling barbecue guys uh, look, uh, you know, I'm Christy Vanover. I got a reputation. You know, if I say it sucks, it sucks. D is there then a, and, and they're okay with that. What happens if you run across the grill and you're like, hey, this thing really blows and there's nothing I like about it? Do they just end up hiding it or not sticking it on the website <laughs> or, or really hyping it up versus something that you really like where they can attach that video? Fortunately, I haven't run across that yet. Um, hopefully I don't. Um, there was a grill that I used that there were features that I personally wouldn't spend the money to buy it. Um, the grill worked fine. Um, but as an example, the, to hold the gas, the propane tank, it had like a canvas strap. I live in the desert. A canvas strap is going to last about six months mm -hmm. and then there's going to be nothing to hold up a tank. So as opposed to something metal or something like that. So I, sh I share that feedback in hopes that the manufacturer will you know, maybe consider that. And that, that grill specifically, it wasn't, um, one of the expert grill reviews I did. It was just one that I was playing around with and testing out, but, um, we just started this, um, the Kamado Joe was my first one. I've got a DCS that I'm going to be trying next. Um, I'm going to be trying the Everdoor Kamado style. I'm going to be trying the, um, one of the pizza ovens that's out right now. I've also been doing a lot of beta testing for Ninja. I continue with that. So yeah, trying out lots of different stuff. Are you keeping those grills? Um, <laughs> fortunately I have a big backyard, um, wow. but it's a mix. I mean, that's like so five right like off it, the bat that you're going to have to find homes for, I mean, like at your house. <laughs> right. Wow. Well, I've got 30 right now, not counting the five that are on the way. <laughs> are they just out in the yard somewhere? 30 grills? Well, I, have an, I, I have my grill kitchen. I've got my outdoor kitchen. So, um, you know, I've got my standouts. I've got my grill works, which is my big asado style grill um, with the St. Ar uh, Ar Argentinian style grill. Um, I've got my Evo, which I didn't think that I was going to love my Evo griddle. Um, turns out I do. Why wouldn't you? So 
I, well, I mean, I have other griddles, and I'm like, why do I need this big thing? Sam, but, the cooking yeah. guy uses it, and he loves it. I know, I know, he does. But like what just Mike was talking about, like grease control. That's a that's a concern I have with griddles. Like I don't want the grease all over, and I just wasn't sure how it would hold up. And it, honestly, it's great, and mm. we have so much fun on it. It's a little tall for me because I'm short, um, but other than that, I have no complaints about that one. So. Yeah, there's there's a lot of grills out there. Some of them I donate to fire departments or whatever. Some of them I sell. Um, yeah, some of them we just give to friends. Just to close it out with the Kamado Joe here um, mm-hmm. over the next couple of questions, uh, you had mentioned there were some hiccups. Like how do, how are you finding its mm-hmm. operation uh, in general? And then what would you give them directly? Like if Kamado Joe called and said, you know, what do we need to do better on this? What would you give them as a couple points to tighten up? Yeah, so we actually have had several conversations um, via email and on the phone to work through some of the things. Um, one of the primary things that that has to be fixed, and I believe they are fixing it, is the temperature variation. So when I set it to 250, on the the way the control board works is you just you know basically program it to 250 like you would a pellet grill, and then it tells you what the ambient temperature of the grill is. It would be about 50 degrees higher. But the thermometer that's on, they have an analog thermometer still at the top that's on the dome. Now that of course is gonna be a little bit variance because of the, where the, the probes are for each, you know, each types of grills. But that one was a little bit closer to what I had it programmed to, but the bottom one was significantly off. Mm. And for somebody like me who can manage heat and control fire, I can play around with it and understand it. But for somebody who's expecting, if I set my grill to 250, I want it to be 250, I knew that was going to cause some conflicts. Um, so there's an app also that you can control everything with. And when I got to the app and everything, I realized that my firmware version was out of date. So we updated the firmware version. That did help it um, a little bit, but they acknowledged that that's something that they're still working mm-hmm. through. And it's actually burning at the right temperature. It's just not registering properly as far as that little, you know, the other thing that tells you what the temperature is. So they're working on those details. There'll be another firmware update. Um, but it's something they know about. And that's, so again, that's part of the um, reason I was with the beta models is just, just kind of work out those kind of kinks. We kind of talked about it. You kind of mentioned it as far as this thing is uh, lighting the charcoal for you. Uh, you had mentioned that some women you would talk to stray away from charcoal because it's a little dirty. Do you think this lowers the barrier to entry to folks that are interested in ceramic grills? Yeah, 100%. Mm. Um, so the the big barriers that i hear from women are with gas grills they get nervous because they don't want to like ignite it like that big poof that like scares them that there could be like a big fire the barrier that i hear with charcoal is that it's dirty so with this one you don't really have to touch it you don't have to touch the charcoal you can pour the charcoal right into it you turn it on like i said the automatic fire starter you don't even have to light it and then the only thing you'll have to touch is taking out the grill grates and then using your scraper tool to put it in the ash basket and dump it like it's really it's really a nice clean setup. And there is a good variety. It's got the indirect and direct with the divide and conquer system. It's got like a half ceramic plate. So you can do half direct to half indirect. Um, it's got a double stack, you know, it's got a, and then there's tons of accessories, the rotisserie and the walk and all sorts of other stuff. Like, you know, every grill comes out with, but from a basic standpoint, I think it's a good, it's a good entry charcoal grill, but I say entry with the caveat that it's really expensive. It's $1,700. So if you really want to grill with charcoal, and you just want to try it, you might want to get a $100, $200 Weber. But if you want to grow with charcoal and you really don't want to mess and you don't want to understand how to control heat and you have the $1,700, then yeah, give it a shot. <laughs> so that's the next question. Is this a mistake or is this where we are in the barbecue and grilling world making um, pellet cookers and, and now this Connected Joe where uh, you know the fire management has been removed is this table stakes now uh, if you want to be getting into the manufacturing of cookers you want to take that stuff away from uh, the majority of people out there i think it's actually really smart i think that what the pellet grill has done for barbecue is huge it has helped bring more and more women into barbecue and more and more even men into barbecue who are intimidated by the challenge of barbecue who maybe bought like me the first the first smoker i bought was a 99 dollar I don't even know if it had a brand name from Walmart offset with super thin walls. I threw big logs of hickory in there and the food was horrible, but I was so proud. I smoked, I barbecued, I thought it was great, but it was horrible. So I thought, I don't, I don't know how to barbecue. The first real smoker I got was a big green egg. um, And it like changed the way that I barbecued. I understood and I learned how to manage fire. Well, that's again, a, a big investment and two, you still had to understand fire. So when pellet grills came on the market, 
I think that that was made things easier. Even my dad, he's got the Weber Genesis that now I used to tell him, okay, dad, turn it to medium. And now he can just like program it to 350. Like it's, it's bringing people to the game. And then I don't think it's going to make barbecue go away because once they get hooked on that and they understand meat temps and other temps, then they get excited to cook over live fire. Then they might try, you know, asado style or some other things. So I think it's kind of like a gateway drug to barbecue. So I'm, I'm cool with it. I do. <laughs> I don't think people are like that. I don't think people, once they know they don't have to figure that skill <laughs> out, I don't think they want to go learn it. I think, uh, sound like an old guy now, but I think when I were getting, <laughs> like when we were getting into it, like you still had to know that. That's a skill that's good to have. You can show up, like I could come to your house and cook on every single cooker that you have from offset, uh, you know, stick burner to everything else in between because I can build and maintain, keep a fire. But if you're just starting on a pellet cooker or a connected Joe or something along these lines where you don't have to know that, I don't think your desire is to learn how to go backwards. I think it's that's just something that evaporates. I, I think that's where social media comes in. I think that's where people like me and others out there who get you excited about barbecue and maybe you want to learn one of my ninja grill recipes or one of my pellet grill recipes, but then you also see me doing a whole hog asador over, you know, a live fire. It it's that FOMO. Like you, you want to be part of it. You want to figure out the next thing. I mean, it's not everybody, but I think through social media, there's people out there who are like, yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty cool and sexy. I, that's pretty rad to work with real fire. So I think there's people out there who get enticed by it. Should other ceramic cooker makers be on board with this? Should they be looking to bring something like this into their portfolio? I don't think it's a bad idea. Hmm. I mean, obviously time will tell. Um, but like I said, with Weber doing it with the gas grill, obviously pellet grills have been doing it. Basically the Ninja outdoor grill does that, you know, you push a button, you turn it on. Um, I think it's, I think it makes things easier. Does it make a traditional barbecue? No, but at least this is one step closer in my opinion to actual barbecue flavor. You're cooking with lump, you're cooking with briquettes. You can throw wood chunks on there. Um, pellet grills, just not quite the same flavor for me. Mm. Um, so I really like that I can still use charcoal and lump and, uh, get that barbecue flavor. When I was ending my conversation with Malcolm in the first hour, I also asked uh, Mike Lang on the way out of his segment in the first hour. We talked about this thing. Now, uh, as I'm kind of figuring out here or learning, maybe this isn't as new as I thought it was, but it was kind of the first I was hearing about it. Pre-trimmed competition meat. So I said, hey, Malcolm, what if I showed up to the same competition as you? We're next door, and you start asking me about my meat, and I say, oh, hey, by the way, Malcolm or Christy, all this stuff came from so-and-so's butcher shop. I didn't put one effing finger on it, and it's all competition trimmed. Uh, you think it looks great or whatever. Do you have a problem with that? Is that cheating? I don't, and I've actually had the idea years ago. Like, everybody hates to trim chicken. I actually like to trim chicken. Um, I just find it kind of therapeutic. But years ago, I was like, the fact that I like this, like, I could get a whole little manufacturing team together, and we could start you know, crushing this out. Same thing with building boxes. My mother-in-law loves to build boxes. People would pay her to build boxes. So I don't think there's an mm. issue. I think that A, you'd have to make sure it's the brand of meat that you want and the quality, like whether you want a gold or whether you want an A9 or, you know, any of that stuff, you'd obviously have to account for that. If I had pre-trimmed chicken as a competitor, I would probably unwrap each and every single one and make sure that the tendon was gone, the vein was, like I'd still double check because I'm OCD. Um, but as far as an edge, no. I, I, I heard Malcolm's segment and I agree 100% with what he did say. We already have an edge. If we can buy a $300 brisket and cook that, that gives us an edge over the backyard guy who's cooking for the first time with his Costco Prime. Um, so there's already enough variables in barbecue that it, it doesn't matter to me. It's how you, how you turn in your box. As far as your OCD is concerned, would you get over that after two orders if they appeared to meet your standard? Like on the third order, would you be less OCD mm. or do you see it continue? Depends on the comp. If it was a comp I needed to win to get to the jack, um, I'd still be OCD. <laughs> I'd probably still trim it myself, honestly, if it was a comp I needed for the jack. But if it was just another comp um, in California, there's you know there's like twelve or thirteen of those, and if I win, I get a draw. That's awesome. Um, then yeah, I'd probably be a little more lax. What else you go? Uh, what else are you up to? Um, cooking this weekend in Ogden. So that should be an auto for the Jack. Supposedly I maybe already have an auto cause I won in California and the other Nevada team who won, won an auto. So I don't know the rules to get into the Jack are all also confusing, but, um, that's, that's, you know, a huge goal. Cause I love, I love the Jack. Um, I'm doing a big cooking event in August in LA with embers and ash and a few other celebrity, um, barbecue guys. Um, so you can buy tickets for that. Um, other than that, yeah, just continuing to cook and 
some things definitely on the horizon within the next month. I just can't quite talk about them yet, but stay tuned to Girls Can Grill and I'll be sharing them. I don't think I asked. Bottom line score, the connected cooker, one being the worst ever, 10 being the best ever. What are we giving it for those that are in consideration of a connected Joe? For now, I would go eight. Eight? And that's, nice. yeah, but still high because I think it's it delivers as long as they can fine tune that temperature variance. Um, one thing people have to get used to is with the connected Joe, you close the bottom vent completely because it has the control fan. And then the top vent, like you barely have it open depending on the temperature that you want to get at. So, um, yeah, that's something just kind of new to adjust to. But if they can get that temperature control down, I I think it's fantastic. So um, the other thing is that it is a ceramic cooker. So whether you're cooking on any type of ceramic cooker, if you start hot, if you start at 400 degrees and you expect to get back down to 225, <laughs> that's not going to happen. Yeah. So um, think about the style of cooking that you want to do. Reverse sear is better starting at like a 225 and then racing it up to a 400. But yeah, uh, overall, I was I was impressed. I if I, if I have a grill I don't love, I'll cook on it maybe twice and then just kind of put it to the giveaway pile. But this one's I think this one's going to stay in my backyard for a little while. Christy, you've said it all. You've given your honest opinion <laughs> here after using it. And for those folks that have seen it in the ads or heard us talk about it on the show for the last couple months and you're on that fence, maybe this puts you over the edge. We shall see. But I certainly appreciate the time tonight. Good luck at the contest that you have coming up. Thank you. And we will talk to you again soon. I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Bye. It's Christy Van Over right there, closing out the show here this evening. So if you have been interested in the Kamado Joe's Connected Cooker, uh, look, to be honest, I had no idea that thing was $1,700. Holy mm. crap. That's very expensive. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Does anybody know what a like what the the extra large competition is? Maybe I'm off base, but seventeen hundred dollars for connected cooker sounds a lot. I mean, if you can save, if you can get the charcoal started, this isn't anti-connected Joe, but I'm just saying, if you don't mind getting a little dirty, you know how to start charcoal, then you can just get a, a flame boss or a barbecue guru or one of those things, or the, the fire board. You can get the fan from them and let that stoke the fire, maybe save some money. But if you don't want to mess around with that and you like ceramic cookers, certainly an option you can take a look at if you would be more in that camp than not. Christy said it's 8 out of 10. And it sounds like if they get that thing worked out that she's talking about, you're looking at you know an 8 plus, maybe 9, maybe it's a perfect, maybe it's 10 if they get that worked out. Andrew Barnhart is saying a big green egg Extra large is 1800 bucks all by itself. All right. So maybe Kamado Joe with the connection technology isn't nearly as bad, considering the Big Green Egg is 1800 bucks, and then you'd be adding technology on top of that. I don't think Big Green Egg is in any rush to bring any type of technology to anything. They've proven that over the last 20 years, so... Uh, living off of what they've always lived off uh, seems to be the motto going on over there. Maybe they'll be changed at some point. Who knows? And I know Primo isn't interested at this point in taking the technology that was offered to them from those folks over at Kamado Joe. Maybe they're interested in making something of their own. We shall see. Time will tell, folks. That's what we know here the most. All right, let's go ahead and break loose. All the way back in the first hour, it was Malcolm Reed from How to Barbecue Right. And that it was Mike Lang from Another Pint, Please. And then we moved to the second hour where we found our pal, my pal, not your pal, Sam the Cooking Guy. And we close it out with Christy Van Over from Girls Can Grill. We talked about the Connected Joe, Kamado Joe Cook. And she has a competition coming. Girlscangrill.com, her website. Follow her socially on Instagram and TikTok and all those other places. She's an influencer, you know. All right. Big show playing for you next week. I have bumped Meathead, if you can believe it. Uh -oh. And we're going to have Barbecue Hall of Famer, Sweet Baby Ray. That's right. And then we'll have Robert Moss. And then the second hour, we will have, for the first time ever, Grilling with Dad, Maciek Zorowski. 
And we'll close it out with Mike McLeod from World Food Championships and uh, uh, the uh, the co-putter together of that famous Dave's event that's going on through the end of August. Plenty to get to. So, how do I always leave? September 11, 2001. I will never forget. Until next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern, this is your program host and proud U.S. American, Greg Rempe. Bye-bye. This is Dion Blumenrader with Big Hoss One Sauce, and you're listening to the best show on all things barbecue with my man, Greg Rempe.